Over the weekend, it emerged that Australia's Foreign Minister, Julie Bishop, sounded out the Cambodian government about its willingness to accept asylum seekers. The suggestion comes just as the country's Prime Minister, Hun Sen, is overseeing a crackdown on dissent in one of Southeast Asia's poorest nations. Hong Lim is a Cambodian-born Labor Member of Parliament in the Australian state of Victoria. Hong Lim, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. This question of uh, Cambodia uh, taking asylum seekers not wanted by Australia came up apparently during discussions between Australia's Foreign Minister Julie Bishop and Cambodia's uh, Foreign Minister Nor Nam Hong. Uh, he was the one to reveal that the issue had even been discussed. Here's what he had to say. Let's take a look. In the past, Cambodians have fled their country to other countries, but now it's time that Cambodia takes in refugees from other countries. Now, as a practical matter, do you think, or how do you think, ordinary Cambodians would respond to the idea of taking asylum seekers? I thought they'd be horrified because uh, Cambodia never had any tradition or experience or history of taking any asylum seeker as such. Uh, and, and we have to remember that there's no infrastructure, there's no, no facility uh, of that nature to, to, you know, to accommodate them to start with. So it's almost like, you know, the Prime Minister say, OK, you know, we, we grab the money and we do something. The Australian Foreign Minister, Julie Bishop, did seem to be caught a little on the hop by uh, the announcement from her uh, uh, Cambodian counterpart. Uh, let's take a look at Julie Bishop after her visit uh, to Cambodia. I have just returned from a visit through ASEAN countries and in each country the question of people smuggling was raised with me and it was also raised in Cambodia. They are very interested in what's happening in Papua New Guinea and on Nauru. The question of taking asylum seekers and the sense you get from the Cambodian government that they are prepared to entertain such an idea. Do you think that in some ways this may be done uh, or being accepted as a way of ensuring the continuity of Australian aid, which is quite substantial to Cambodia, at a time when there are considerable suggestions from around the globe that perhaps uh, countries should pull back on assistance? Australia is the second biggest donor to, to, to Cambodia. So you can almost like read between the lines that, that it, you know, that there's that element of, uh, you know, implied intent. Uh, and if that is the case, then is this pretty tragic? Is this rather unfortunate you now to sort of impose something like that on a, a poor country? But more importantly, what, what, what I think uh, we here, uh, now the Cambodian Australian community, very, very concerned is that. Um, Cambodia at the moment is going through some very, very serious political turmoil because the election was not, uh, it was rigged. And therefore, by Australia going in there, you know, proposing something like that, it's almost like endorsing the regime, Say, look, now, you, you know, now we, we want to do business with you. Now, you are a Labor politician, and some people might say, well, of course, you'd say something like that. But on the question of human rights, uh, from the statements uh, made by uh, Julie Bishop since he's left Cambodia and indeed in Phnom Penh before she left, she did reveal that she had discussed and raised Australia's concerns about human rights in Cambodia with the government. That at least should please you. On the 3rd of, of, of January, when five Cambodian governments you know, protesting you know, for higher wage, and they were shot dead right, by the you know, Hun Sen uh, military regime, and yet, you know, the Foreign Minister didn't say anything. But three weeks later, the 22nd of January, only two you know, Ukrainian protesters were shot dead. You know, the whole world jumping up and down, including our Foreign Minister, who called in the Ukrainian ambassador in to dress him down. And I thought that you now there should be some consistency there. And, and therefore, we, we, we just hope that by going there and to, you know, to, to do, do business with the present uh, the government, uh, it should not. It should not be taken as not now, sending them a very uh, wrong message to the whole world. Our time is brief. One final question. You did recently meet with former Australian Foreign Minister Gareth Evans, who of course played a pivotal role in bringing peace back to Cambodia. What did he say to you about 
what Australia's role ought to be. He feels very strongly about the fact that Australia used to take the lead. And uh, I understand that he's been contacting the foreign minister himself and also contacting the shadow foreign minister to raise his concern and to see whatever possible he can do. Hong Lim, we better leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.